Today I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of DJI's new Power 1000 and Power 500 on my off-grid high desert homestead. This is DJI's premier step into off-grid power and who better to test an off-grid unit than somebody that's truly lived off-grid for over four years now. I have tested many units over the past several years and nobody has a higher quality build or higher quality components than DJI, just like you might be used to with the DJI drone line. Whether you need to charge your DJI Power 1000 or your Power 500, both can be charged in about 70 minutes with your standard 110 outlet. On either unit, you can select 600 or 1200 watts while charging with 110. The 1000 comes with two SDC inputs and the 500 one. They offer accessories. If you don't have that standard SDC input, you can get their accessory to plug in up to three different 100 watt solar panels. It comes with hardware so it can be bolted to the side of the unit, making sure that you don't misplace it or bump it around. Just use the included bolts to attach this accessory to your DJI Power 1000. Turning one of your larger solar inputs into three smaller solar inputs. If you can't use 110 to charge your unit in about 70 minutes, you could use a small solar panel like this one. I charged both of these units in the better part of the afternoon. After both units were charged, I took the 1000 into my shop to charge my e-bike battery. You can fast charge DJI drones, an example the Mavic 3, in as little as 32 minutes. The 1000 comes with dual USB-C outputs at 140 watts max. The Power 1000 has a max output of 2200 watts. Let's charge up my DJI drone and take this out to the high desert. I decided to plug the solar panel back in to be sure that we can charge items while the unit's being charged. So I charged up the e-bike battery and the drone with the larger unit and I'm going to bring the smaller unit with me so we can recharge in the field. My Mini SE took about 30 minutes to fully charge and only 15 minutes to recharge in the field. I have a 1600 gallon an hour pump connected to my aquaponic system and I thought it would be fun to set the DJI Power 500 up, see how it did and eventually set up the 1000 as well. And look at this, the bilge pump is flowing, everything's moving. That means that the water is circulating four times an hour in my aquaponics system. So how do the two units compare side by side? The 1000 USB-C outputs are at 140 watts max, while the 500 are at 100 watts max. The Power 1000 has an output of 2000 watts max, while the 500 has a output of 1000 watts max. The Power 1000 is about 29 pounds, which makes it pretty ideal for van life, camping, water sports, and whatnot, while the smaller unit would be better for taking out in the field to charge your DJI drone batteries or cameras for photography. What's more, DJI drone fast charging is exclusive to the DJI power stations. Realistically, out in the field, if you don't drain your battery down to below 20%, most drones can recharge in around 30 minutes. When I mentioned the good build quality from DJI, I wasn't kidding. Look at the fan from other power stations compared to DJI's power station, and you can see why these systems run much quieter. If you live off-grid like I do, you know redundant systems is important. I run fans and lights in my root cellar. I pump water around the homestead. I keep my pumps and water moving in the aquaponic system. If I need to pump water up to my water tower, I use electricity to do that. In fact, I keep my pond clean from algae using a bog filter. And I have little systems around the homestead, including my camper van, to make sure I can power everything that I need to around the homestead. Remember to never plug in a solar panel that provides too much power to a unit when charging because you could cause an issue. So remember the standard port that they come with allows up to 100 watts of input. If you purchase their MPPT attachment which turns the one input into three inputs, 
those are allowed 200 watts each up to 400 watts. So you could plug two 200 watt panels in there and have 400 watts charging your Power 1000. They do offer a car charging attachment, which is going to be pretty slow, but if that's the only option you have, it'll do the trick. A better option if you're going to be driving might be to install a small inverter in your car and charge it with the 110 because you can turn it from 1200 watts down to 600 to be sure you don't trip anything in the vehicle. Personally, I think that I would use the smaller unit if I was going out in the field and I would be able to charge my drones uh, multiple times before heading back home. And the larger unit, I would probably keep on the counter in my van while I'm camping in the van or maybe keep it by your ice chest while you're fishing. You can get a carrying case as an accessory which has vent ports on the sides and a large opening in the front so you can access everything that you'd need to get to. And of course if you're not sure what solar panel to get, just select one that comes directly from the manufacturer and that way you'll be positive that you're not going to plug in a panel that might damage your device. What are you waiting for? Hit my affiliate link down below so you can learn more about these units. Thanks for stopping by my homestead. Make sure you check out my free ultimate guide to off-grid living. I'll put a link down below. You can subscribe to learn more about my homestead. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.